The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't yet viewed the Watch Me First video, please do that first as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, maps are graphical windows to display and work visually with components. There are three types of map, mind maps, concept maps and project maps. And in this video, we show you an example of each. However, maps are different from the other components in terms of actions. Because they are displays of other components, most actions are taken on the components displayed within them, rather than on the maps themselves. As you can see, all the maps you create are stored together in the maps area of the navigation view. As usual, you can create subfolders here to organise different types of maps if you want to, but I haven't done that in this project. Instead, I've got all the maps I've so far created listed here together at the top level of the maps folder. You can see by looking at the icons that there are three types of map, and I've got them sorted by type in this list, although of course I can sort them by any column header. Hovering over the icons tells me whether they are a project map, a concept map, or a mind map. I'm going to open a mind map first, this one here, and I'll just make a little bit more space. Mind maps are useful for quickly brainstorming ideas and mapping them out. The theory of mind mapping is that you have one central idea from which other ideas stem. So in this example, the central idea is young people and the other ideas hang off there. Generating mind maps is really quick and easy, but there are some restrictions to what you can do with them in terms of connecting the ideas represented by the shapes. So for example, if I wanted to collect modes to family context, I can't do that in a mind map. The whole idea of mind mapping is that everything stems from the central idea, young people. I can reorientate this mind map using one of the layout options, and you can see that it will always reorientate around the young people idea. I do have a floating idea in this mind map, but it's not possible to create sibling or child ideas from this one because it's not the central idea. One use of a mind map is to sketch out the different areas of a coding schema, because choosing this option will create all the shapes in this mind map as nodes. I'll just do that quickly. And when I go and have a look at my nodes, you'll now see that I've got the beginnings of a coding schema focused around the shapes that were in my mind map. Now I'm going to open a project map. Project maps are ways of visualising associations between components based on the work done elsewhere in the project. I'll open up Transition to Adulthood to show you a project map. This project map visualises one of the sets in this project. Transitions. And is currently showing all the components that are members of this set. I can further visually interrogate this project by asking Envivo to show me other associations from any component in the map. So I'm just going to choose this node here and show that to you. What that does is show me in the list here all the associated items with the node that I asked for. So in this case, there are other nodes, other sources, and a framework matrix. And you can see that I can choose to bring in one or more of those. And when I do, Envivo will link up that item that I've just brought in with any other components that are associated with it that are already in this project map. Again, I can change the default layout of a project map and I have different options than we had before. But just like in a mind map, I cannot create my own connections between components in a project map. What I mean by that is I couldn't create a link from this node here to this source, or indeed from a node to another node. If I want to do that kind of work, then I have to create a concept map. So now I'll open up a concept map so that we can have a look at that. 
You can see that this map contains both abstract items, similar to the shapes we had in the mind map, although I can choose what they look like, and project items from elsewhere in my project. So in some ways, it's like a combination of a mind map and a project map. However, although I can ask to bring components into a concept map, unlike with project maps, I cannot ask Envivo to show me the associations from these components to other components. I don't have that option available to me here. However, I can create my own connections. If I go into edit mode, I have a connector option here, and then I can create connections as I like within this map. Regardless of which map I'm in, a project map or a concept map, I can always access the content of any components that are within a map from this position. So I'm just going to show you that if I choose a node and double click on it, it will access the coded references at that particular node, just like it would if I double clicked on a node from the main nodes area. This is an example of what we mean when we say that you can act on the components from within maps rather than on the map itself. Having said that, we can export maps into a graphic file so that we can paste it into a presentation, a report, and so on.